fall of 1998, and I came here to be a singer, and I did what everybody said to do, which was go to the Bluebird Cafe and listen to the songwriters tell their stories and sing their songs. So that's what I did, and um, I walked in, and I was listening to these guys, and there were four of them telling their stories and singing their songs. But there was one guy in particular that was wearing overalls, and he kind of had some red spiky hair going on. And he just caught my attention by the way he was telling his stories, the songs he was singing, the heart that he was emoting through his music. And I just kind of sat there in awe, not knowing anything about this man, but through every song I kept falling deeper and deeper in love with this guy, not even knowing a, th a single thing about him. And about a few songs into the performance, he introduced his little girls, Heidi and Hopi, to the audience. And I was really just disappointed because I thought, man, this guy's married and he's got babies. And so two years went by and, and I, I got a record deal and I was, you know, trying to work music and I was working for this horse vet. And one of the doctors invited me to go with his wife to a, a songwriter's night. And I said, sure, I'd love to go. Who's playing? And he mentioned Rory's name. And I said, wait a minute. I said, Rory Feek, the guy that wears overalls and he sang that song, The Chain of Love. And he said, yeah, that's him. I said, oh, I gotta tell you, I saw that guy play at the Bluebird two years ago. And I love everything about that guy. I love the way he walked. I love the way he talked. He told stories. I said, if that guy wasn't married, I would have married him the next day. And uh, Dr. Bob said, well, well, he's not married. He's, he's been a single dad for like the last 12 years. And um, he's raised his girls by himself. I said, are you serious? I said, well, that makes me love him even more, and I still don't know anything about him. I am going to that show. I want to see him. I just want to see if all those feelings that I had from the first time I saw him are still there. And so I went, and I was so excited, and I went running up the steps, and my feet landed, and I looked up, and there he stood in his overalls, and he was greeting everybody as they were coming through the door. And I just was like, I couldn't say anything, and I said, hello. And he said, well, hello. I think I said, well, hello. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went and I ran and I got my seat. And I was just nervous as can be. And uh, so I sat and I listened to him perform and, and all of his songs. And through every, every song and every word, I was falling deeper and deeper in love. And then I, I knew that he, you know, that maybe... I just didn't know. I didn't know anything. I just knew that I really respected him and admired him, and I could tell he was a really great person. A couple days later, I was in the studio, and my friend, uh, Tim Johnson, who I've written a lot of songs with, walked in, and he said, I got two words for you. He said, Joey Martin. I said, Joey Martin, that girl hates me. <laughs> and he said, I don't know about that. He said, after the show last weekend, he said, my wife and I were giving her a ride back to her truck, and she asked about you and asked if you were dating anybody, and I said, Hmm. So I, uh, I left her a message again. I said, Joey Martin, this is Rory. Here's my home number. I will be at home later on tonight if you want to talk to me. So she called me about 9 p.m. and I'm sitting in that um, green room over there in the farmhouse here. And the uh, very first thing she ever said to me, no convers we never had a conversation before. The very first thing she ever said was, I saw you play at that songwriters night about two years ago at the Bluebird Cafe and she said I loved everything about you and I knew in that moment you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives together. So we talked for a little bit and then she said the reason I've been kind of being cold and distant to you is that those feelings were so strong the first time and then I came back to see you at the Bluebird Cafe or at this other songwriters night and those feelings were still there. And she said, I feel it so strong, but in the last year and a half, I've been dating another fella back in Indiana. And so I just want you to know if things were different, you and I were gonna be together. And I said, really? So I, I'm, I was your destiny, but now I'm not your destiny. She said, yep. I said, wow. Uh, we got to spend a little bit of time together though, and we wrote one song. You remember the first song we ever wrote? I do remember the first song. It was a really special one because it was, Literally, it talked about how we kind of both knew there were these feelings that we had for one another, but it didn't look like we were going to be together.
What if I hadn't gone along With that other guy What if you hadn't sang that song And made me start to cry What if you hadn't said hello Or smiled at me that way and Maybe I wouldn't be hurting so The way I am today But I'm thankful for the day What if I wasn't home? And what if we hadn't shared that cup of coffee all alone? And what if I hadn't felt your kiss? What if my heart didn't fall? Of all the things I'd miss if we never loved at all. But I'm thankful for the day we met that evening in September. Cause I'd rather have some. to remember Cause I'd rather have something to Y'all don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.